For me, success is definitely personal. I want to see what I'm capable of doing. There's a lot of things I have yet to accomplish. One of the things about running is we're never fully satisfied. We accomplish one goal and we move right on to the next one because we see what's possible. That's what I want to do. I want to see what's possible. Hey guys, thanks for coming back and joining me tonight. I had quite the exciting night while I was making dinner. My husband took Athens out on a little adventure and Athens fell in the creek. So he comes back soaking wet and I may never let my husband take him out unsupervised again. Of course, he is putting him to bed right now unsupervised. So hopefully that goes well and there are no catastrophes, but it was quite an eventful evening. So that was uh, the excitement that's going on here in the Gracie household. I am really excited to talk, to talk about tonight's topic because it's really applicable to me and what I'm doing right now. And I think it might be something that you can do, that you can incorporate, that really anyone at any time at any phase can incorporate into their training. So let's get started. Tonight I want to talk about how to track fitness without racing. There's obviously at this time, uh, there's not a lot of racing going on. So we have to find other ways to track fitness. But this can happen at any time. Um, maybe you don't have the funds to travel for races. Maybe you have a really busy schedule and you can't incorporate races into that schedule. Maybe you have kids and trying to organize and coordinate races on the weekends is just a lot of work. So there's a lot of different ways that you can still track that fitness and be excited and work towards goals and see progress without racing. So the first uh, suggestion that I have is to implement some time trials. And I've been doing this. I started at uh, the end of April where I did a 5k time trial. I'm now going to do a second one next week. So that's the end of May. So about four weeks later, I'm going to attempt the same exact thing that I did a month ago. And what that does it is it allows me to have a lot of quality workouts, a lot of quality training, a lot of focusing on speed, focusing on strength, so that I can build a stronger and better foundation for this month's effort versus last month's effort. And then I can see that progress. It's really important to make sure that you don't do these type of things too frequently because you need to have the time to have that adaptation, to have that fitness, to have that growth. Um, and so I felt that like around a month seemed like a good amount of time for me. That may be different for you. It may be three weeks. It may be five weeks. Um, maybe you don't have a ton of interest in doing a lot. So you might want to do a time trial at the beginning of a training block. And then, you know, eight to 12 weeks later, do another time trial at the end of that. Um, so that can also be done at like lots of different distances. So I just chose 5k because it seemed to make the most sense for me with where I'm at right now and with my goals and what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, but that distance may be different for you. Maybe it's a 10k, maybe it's a half marathon, whatever it is. Um, you know, maybe it's even shorter. Maybe it's like a 400 or an 800. Um, you know, for high school kids who didn't have a track season, you know, this summer you may be getting after it in different ways. So there's a lot of different options for the time trial, but the key is that you're giving yourself enough time in between to make sure that you can get in some really solid and really quality training to support that next time trial so that you can have that growth and have that development and be able to see the progress and build that confidence that your fitness is improving. The second idea is to have a workout and focus on improving your time. 
So as a coach, I have several af athletes who are doing this, who are like, eh, you know, I don't really want to do the whole time trial thing because that's stressful. It kind of feels like a race and I know it's not a race environment. And so I would prefer to do a workout and this could be any type of workout. You could do a fart lick, you could do a track workout, you could do a tempo run. Um, and then you're just trying again, you know, th every three to five weeks or so, repeat it, do a very similar lead up those few days leading into the event that you've chosen and then do that workout and see the progress that you made. And again, this would be going for time. So maybe you do a, um, a six mile loop and you have a six mile loop that you do and then a month later you do that same exact six mile loop and you see if you can run faster. I had a client do that um, last month and a client do it this month and that was the workout that she chose and she ran two minutes faster on her loop this month than she did last month and she was really proud of that. And so that was the way that she was able to track that progress and I was really excited for her and really happy for her and she was really proud of herself. Um, or it could be a track workout, like I mentioned, or a fart lick, where you're doing something that is very consistent, um, but it's very similar. So, you know, maybe you're doing um, like 200s on the track, for example, or 30 second fart licks, and then you are trying to improve your speed um, during that time. And so then you would track, okay, did I make that progress over a month's time? Um, the third option would be to have a workout and that you choose, whether it would be a speed workout or a tempo run, but then you would focus on running the same pace, but you would increase the length of the workout. So for example, I've been doing this as well, where I have been doing 30 second hill repeats. And so I run 30 seconds up a hill and I stop. And I've been trying to make it to right around the same area. But the first week that I did this workout, I did nine hills of 30 seconds each. And then the next time I did 10. And then the next time I did 12. And so I was making it to the same spot on the hill, but I was just adding more and more hills to the workout. You could do this in a tempo run where you just add an extra half mile or an extra mile to that tempo run. Um, or in distance, if you are trying to run four miles as your goal, and then maybe four and a half in a few weeks time, and then maybe five after that. And you're trying to run the same pace, but just be able to like incrementally go a little bit further. So um, those are three different ways. Again, a time trial um, of some kind, a workout to improve time, or a workout at the same pace that you are increasing the distance of. And those are three different ways that you can track your progress in fitness um, without having a race. And so I think that this can be super applicable to a lot of people, especially right now, but also at any time. As a coach, I've had so many athletes who have, you know, just for many various reasons, maybe they just don't even like to race that often, um, have decided that, you know, I just want to be able to kind of track my fitness throughout my buildup without having the pressure of racing. And so these are three different options, three different ways that you can incorporate that into your training. And again, the number one thing is making sure that you give yourself enough time in between each of these efforts. Um, you know, trying to do this weekly would probably be pretty frustrating because you don't have the time to build up that strength, to build up that fitness, to work on different aspects and different components like your speed or your endurance. And so those two things are going to help really build and boost your fitness to move you to that next fitness level that you want to see. And so making sure that you're giving yourself enough time is going to be really essential. Um, you know, if you think about it, like if you were trying to race and you were trying to race every single week, like back to back to back to back, you're probably not gonna every single week see that progress. And it takes, you know, you kind of stagnate, 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 and then you see a bump forward in fitness. And so you might as well just 
skip the stagnation part, not worry about that when you can control it because you're not racing and you have the opportunity to focus on aspects that you feel are weak. So you can kind of reflect back on like, oh, when I did this workout, you know, I kind of felt like midway through I lost focus. So I'm really going to stay focused during these next few weeks when I'm in the middle of my workouts. And that's going to be something that can help me move forward. And then when you practice that, you can then apply it to your time trial or your workout of choice. And that can help you make that progress. So I hope that you guys can find some value in this and you can figure out how to hone it into what makes sense for you specifically because every scenario is different, every person is different, so you have to figure out what makes the most sense to you, what excites you, and what's going to give you that confidence as you move forward and you try to track fitness without a race. So let's get running this week. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.